Hi there, folks. I'm Lorene. I am a producer who's working with Cakewalk right now. Cakewalk by Band Lab. Great DAW. It's free. Great way to start making some art. And today I want to talk to you about the Arranger track, which was something I completely ignored when first getting to know Cakewalk. Mike at Creative Sauce did a great little video on it, which I will link here in case I um, totally spaced out and missed something in this video for you. And also just because he's great. Do you ever listen to a song on the radio and be like, oh my God, that's such a good song. I want to write a song like that. Well, you can. It's called a reference track and producers use them all the time. That's It's very standard. It's uh, that to take a reference track and build a new song based on this, the parts of that song. It's not cheating. It's not stealing. It's uh, it's dissecting and studying. <laughs> you you don't have to be a special unicorn all the time and reinvent how music is made. You're already a special unicorn, and you can add your special unicorn magic by filling in the blanks of a song that already really works as far as arrangement goes. Today I'll be using the wonderful little track called The Way by the Duke of Uke and his Novelty Orchestra uh, off of their album, off of our album called a April's Empire. Yes, full disclosure, this is uh, a band that I am in. So I figured there'd be no copyright problems with this. However, you can use whatever song you want as long as you have an mp3 of it you can go from there. So let's get going. All right, I've got my new project. I'm going over to File, Import, Audio. You could also grab it from here, from the media section. Um, this just seems a little easier because it's, it's in my downloads. So right here, and it pops it right in there. The default it, uh, tempo is always 120 and always four on the floor, and um, I think usually in the key of C. Yes, so we're going to change that as we need to. Now that we've got it here in our DAW, let's play it, and we're going to get the tempo. So play it first, then go to Project, Insert Tempo Change, and get this nifty click here to tap Tempo. It's gonna Sprite little number, so it's let's go with 149. So it's in 3 4, not 4 4. So let's just click up here and change that to 3 4. And we're starting at the very beginning. If you started at anywhere other than measure one, it'll jump time. You don't want that for this. I mean, there's going to be projects where you may want to change the key signature at a certain spot, or you may want to change the time signature at a certain spot, and you can do that. Um, but if you just want the same key and time for the whole song, make sure it starts at number one. Let's have a listen to this metronome with the song. It's not going to be exactly lined up. We'll get that in a second. Okay. It sounds about like the right time though. So what I like to do is give it a little bit of headroom. And you can see where the beats where the beats are. So let's listen. Hey, I got it. Wow. Nice. It may take some scooting around and uh, you may need to change the tempo a couple of times to get it close. Now that we've got it adjusted to being on the beat, lined up, now we're going to listen through and I'm going to hit M at every spot, the sections change, M for mark. Sweet little intro. M. See how it puts a little flag in the... Uh, Time. Going to lose. It ain't on the right. It ain't. I probably I probably should have marked that. So okay. Alt to zoom out. Alt and scroll scroll wheel to zoom out. Where was our first marker? Oh, over here. So that's our intro. Okay. I think I missed a mark, so the way that 
not exactly with the tempo either. thought about this song in this way it doesn't really have traditional verse chorus verse chorus which makes it interesting <laughs> second verse section there the harmonies we have our markers in place select the song you see how the green punch bar comes up so the whole song is collected selected right click on the green section there and you see where it says create sections from markers click that and boom you have these little sections now we're going to adjust them and name them over here this a Let's hit that little A. And you can listen through and rename the sections and make notes uh, in this, this section over here. Over here in the notes section, you can note like cool instrumentation things that you like, effects that you want to use, if they added har if they added any harmony, just really listen, take note. Like how did the beats change up or what you know, what did you like that you want to try to use yourself? These sections don't quite look exactly right, so you can adjust them. That section is connected now to the tracks below, and it would be no matter how, like, all the tracks that you have down there. So when you are dealing with just wanting to change up the sections, click it twice. And now you see that I get that arrow where I can change the size of it. We're going to just drag this all the way over. And this is our intro. And let's listen. Oh, nope. Okay, cool. So actually our intro ends here at this A1. Again, clicking twice and then right click, split at the now time. And that is gonna na be named verse one. On the right. I'm gonna change the size of this clicking twice again droop, clicking twice and this is verse one I'm 
with harmonies. So there's no mistakes I think this is the chorus. <laughs> yep, we're gonna call it the chorus. Uh, and then this section is... <laughs> what do you call it? Um, coral rise. How about that? Okay, let me stop. So this is our... Our coral rise. And then this is our like cor coral chorus. It's different from the s the word chorus. <laughs> we were special unicorns. <laughs> what can I say? All right. Here's a, I want to turn this off too now. Don't exactly need it. If it's not exact, it's fine. It's fine because you're gonna just be using this as an outline for your own stuff. Okay, there's our choral chorus, and then that ends here. And here we are at verse two. Verse two. That is verse two with harmonies. And I guess this is the chorus. It has sort of a pre-chorus feel. Pop music is very different. <laughs> it's real obvious. This is an instrumental rise. It would be interesting to build something off of this. This is an unusual structure. Okay, there's our instrumental chorus. This always kind of reminded me of Sesame Street. I love it. I'm gonna mark right there because that that's really a it's a double this is double but I want you know it's nice to split it up again right click split at now time oh you see what it did I didn't double click so now it's like uh why did it do that all right control Z split it now time okay now it did not split thank you very good this little ending section, we don't really need, so I'm actually just gonna click it once and delete it. Boom, it's gone. But you can change the colors to whatever you like. I'm gonna change this intro color to be um, mustard olive green, and then change these to be the same color. And I'm gonna change the verse two to be the same color because it is very similar as verse one. And then those choruses are similar also. Those are the sung choruses. And uh, then these are these are just a little different. I might, I might make that purple as well. And so now I can get a feel for like these are the sections that are um, are similar to each other. Plus, you can navigate over here, which is neat. If I click this, it brings the cursor over here. If I click this, it brings the cursor over there. That's pretty handy. And I can click through and make sure I've got it, got it correct. So is this chorus no real similar to this chorus? No yes, indeed. And this verse? Yep, really similar to you. Mm-hmm, those are similar. Yep, good. And these rises. And then the instrumental rise. These chromatic rises. Yep, those are similar too. Now I've got all the parts of the song and I could build something interesting of my own based on this, if this is a structure that I like. If I want also, I can rearrange with arrangements. Like say I wanted this to go right from the, I don't know why I would, but uh, if I wanted to go intro, oh. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to not have this coral rise remove, then I could play it that way without destroying any of this. It's like, say I wanted to get rid of both of the rises, remove, and say I just wanted one of the ending choruses. So then it would play through like that. So this is arrangement one. 
and I can go to insert committed arrangement. That's interesting. Yeah, I just learned about this feature and I find it really, really helpful um, for tracking out a song. So this is how it would sound like going to just right from the chorus into the... Oh, I see. Okay, it, it put it over here. It's not perfect, but yeah, you get the idea. Can change it up. I hope you find this feature as helpful as I did. This is like the first thing that I open up now when I when I start a new project. I don't have like the blank page syndrome anymore. I just pull in a reference track and start dissecting it. And usually that inspires me to to really write something fresh and uh, it's it just seems like it's easier when I can fill in the blanks rather than just come up with something out of the blue. Um, so if you like that, uh, please give a like. And if you are interested in more music production type things, you may like to subscribe as I am learning all the time. And I like to share what I'm learning because it helps me learn it better. Have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. And bye for now. <laughs>